Kay and I am back with day five of 31 days of cut file fun. I'm also mixing this with mixed media mayhem. Um, this is the recipe that I will be following for today. And what I have with me is some distress oxide and distress ink, both in prize ribbon. Uh, these are brand new to me, so I'm not really sure which one I want to use just yet. This is the cut file that is on our list for today. Again, it is a not uh, it is a just nick cut file. I have two photos that I will be working with today. This is the beginning of our gear garden that I am working on. Um, I have from Rosie Studios the Carpe Diem collection. Just a few die cuts that I have put in the packaging of the rub-ons. So I'm not gonna go through every single die cut because honestly, I'm not gonna use all of those, um, but it is from uh, the Rosie Studios Carpe Diem collection is where all of these elements came from. And I also have a homemade uh, paper clip that I created several years ago um, using ribbon and one of those ribbon buckles um, from like the 90s, oh my gosh. Uh, I also have two pieces of paper from a Close to My Heart collection called True Love. This is back from 2019, and I love this blue that reads as a solid, and same with that purple. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, so anyways, just showing you guys that it is close to my heart. And then lastly, I have a Kaiser Craft uh, wood grain from the Barber Shop collection. Now this one is also from back in the day. I'm not really sure if it, shall, if it tells me a year or not, but it does not. Um, and I just wanted to break up all this pattern. Uh, with a beautiful wood grain is what my goal was. So I will be working with an eight and a half by 11 layout yet again today. Uh, like I said, that is what is normally all left in my, um, in my albums by the time that I'm done and I'm coming up to finishing an album is all the smaller pieces, um, all the smaller layouts and whatnot. I usually do those off camera because they are just so simple and quick and easy, but, um, this cut file actually went really well with these photos and so I really wanted to show you guys that you don't have to use a cut file in its entirety in all honesty. So I wanted to break up this pattern um, for our recipe for mixed media um, today is multicolor pattern paper background and ink. So I have the multicolor um, with my pattern um, paper so it's an it's an all-in-one uh, the multicolors uh, can be seen in the pattern paper. And then, of course, it's going to be my background. So I'm trying to, uh, I, I want to say, lighten the blow of such uh, a print by adding these corners to it. Um, because the corners read as solids. And so it'll break up that pattern paper and, and make it a little bit less um, busy in the background. Because once you start adding a ton of elements to such a busy background everything tends to get lost or blend in and so I, I do that by um, just adding something else to the background it doesn't necessarily have to be two ripped corners it could have been a strip in the center um, a strip off to the side anything to break help break up that pattern and then when your photos go between the pattern and um, that element it definitely helps um, helps the eye rest over on one side or the other. Um, and then of course the, um, the embellishments can be added to both sides, uh, easily because you've got that resting point. So anyways, not that I'm a designer at all, you guys, it's just something that I find uh, eye appealing. And, and I think that that's why I think, I think that <laughs> anyways, going to go ahead and glue these down. Um, now I did struggle just a little bit with this corner because I didn't flip it. Um, but then I finally got the hint and flipped my paper. Uh, so yeah, it is flipped up and down and left and right. There is no direction on this paper. So I don't even know what, which way is up anymore. Uh, when I finally get to this, um, you know, putting the layout together, went ahead off camera and trimmed down my photos and that purple paper so I could use it as a, my photo mat. Again, it's one of the challenges that I've been doing since March is using up my reads as a solid prints instead of my cardstock. In fact, I have downsized my cardstock so much that I don't I only have maybe neutrals and then of course my favorite blues and greens. That's it, you guys. Uh, very rare. All right, so on my messy mat, I have put some small adhesive on the back of each letter. 
and I'm going to take the Distress Ink. I decided not to use Oxide because I wanted the true intensity of this color um, to shine and I'm only inking the bottom half, but when I try to keep going over and over and darkening the bottom half so it looks ombre, I do end up shading ever so lightly the upper half as well. But it is so light that it still looks like it is white. Um, so I love this effect. I love doing this effect. However, it's time consuming. And so I don't think to do this effect very often. Now I did rip my little S, but because it is going to go back into the cut file, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. I just need it to be held together long enough for me to ink it. So I'm going to put a small amount of washi tape down there uh, so that way I can have it held together. Um, and I do reinforce it with my finger. Uh, luckily, it was my last one, so I didn't have to worry about that too much. And I'm going to cut my cut file apart. I don't want the word happy. Um, I know that that sounds uh, redundant um, because I am very happy with how our little corner um, uh, gear garden is looking. However, I just don't see it necessary. Um, so I'm just going to say our... Uh, this is our place and that's it. I don't want the word happy at all. Uh, plus it doesn't really fit. Um, <laughs> I probably could have um, cut out and left happy down at the bottom, but then I felt like um, the, the layout would have been crowded. Uh, to be honest. So I picked out a few elements from these um, die cuts from Rosie Studios. I thought I was going to bring the bugs in, um, but then I thought, no, I'm not really sure because all I was finding at this time was one bug, but I did end up finding three more and I definitely should have brought the bugs in. Uh, maybe I'll add them later, later um, after I'm done because, I, you know, by the time I'm done voiceovering, it's uh, definitely already put back in the album. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not really sure, but I do like the addition of the bugs. I think I decided they were too big. Um, they, they were just not small enough uh, to go where I wanted them to go. And that's why I decided not to do it. But I did end up finding more bugs. And I opted not to do any of the rub-ons because by the time that I put them down, I think they're going to get lost because of all the prints that I've got going on. All right, so I'm gonna build a few leaf clusters just as some tiny little elements to add to this. There is not much I want to add to this layout because of how busy that background is. Um, when you have a busy background like this, and I know it doesn't look busy, it is busy for me. Um, but when you have a busy background like this, it does not take a lot of embellishing or anything else to enhance the layout. The background paper does all the work for you and all you have to do is add a few personal touches and that is it. Um, it they are the most simplest layouts to, to work with um, and especially if you're struggling, um, make a few of these um, types of layouts, you know, with, with busy backgrounds and then your, your mojo might come back. I'm not going to say it's definitely going to come back, but it gets you excited because you're going to accomplish a lot more when you create layouts like this. Okay, going to go ahead and apply all of my um, cut file down right at this moment. I have, um, I have a few words picked out. I'm going to use that uh, paper clip, and I was going to pop these... Um, pop the letters up and then I decided that I wasn't going to because I've already got the adhesive on them so I'm just sticking them back in place. I also have all of the inner bits of this layout or of this cut file as well so that way um, you know like the inside of the O and the R and the P um, so that way it looks like a finished cut file instead of just uh, letters put back in but I decided not to uh, lift up my lift up my letters because of my S. I wanted to make sure that that S stays stationary because I did rip it and um, I am going to actually glue it down extra so that way it does not um, come out or accidentally fall out. So I have three more, um, I have three of these little leaf clusters which I think add uh, to this layout very well. I'm going to go ahead and um, put some little words up there. It just says, um, uh, currently in this place or in this space or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, to be honest, but I like the addition of the gold. The gold is a solid. Um, it is the only solid other than the cut file 
uh, added to this layout, but I do end up liking how it looks. I'm going to secure my, um, my paper clip down a little bit more because the buckle tended to slide and I did not want it to move out. So I just secured it with two little um, glue dots and that is it. This is my layout today. Uh, it says currently this is, this is my happy. Oh, there it is. So there's the word happy. <laughs> I did end up adding that. Um, I did not, I didn't remember that. Uh, but yes, this is um, my layout today for Mixed Media Mayhem, as well as for our 31 Days of Cut File Fun. It is day five. And uh, be sure to check out Christina over on her Facebook group. If you do miss her live, be sure to check out the 31 Days of Cut File Fun Facebook group and check out everything that is happening over there. And uh, I will see you guys all later. Oh, um, also, I almost forgot. I do apologize a lot. The Mixed Media Mayhem gals that are playing along today are down. The link is down below. So that way you can um, go through and hop through all of their videos and see how they are using this recipe. I am really enjoying this type of Mixed Media Mayhem because instead of scrap lifting somebody over and over and over again, um, we're taking a, a, a recipe and showing you guys many different ways to how to use these elements. And I really like that. I like the fact that um, people have the product, but then don't know how to use it. And so now we're, we're sharing with, with you guys how to use that product. Um, so yes, uh, be sure to check out all those gals and how they're going to use the mixed media recipe for today. And I will check y'all later. Bye.